Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate closed loop simulation of three phase SPWM inverter for a motor load in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started with our topic for today closed loop three phase SPWM inverter for a motor load. This is basically the MATLAB model for this particular circuit. So, I've already made a video with respect to open loop mode simulation of a three phase SPWM inverter for a motor load so this is basically an extension of the previous video that is being done the link of the previous video will be available in the description and it will also be available in the end screen so I suggest you to watch that video first and then this will basically be an extension of the previous video by only uh, considering the parameters with respect to the closed loop mode all right uh, let's go to uh, MATLAB and start our simulation over there here we are in MATLAB, so we will be uh, clicking on the Simulink library browser and searching for the components that we want. At the first place in the feedback loop, we will be requiring a constant block, so add that. And uh, we also require a sum block, uh, which is basically obtained by searching as sum. So we'll be using subtract block over here, uh, although we're searching for sum, it gives you all the blocks and that's why we search by sum usually. And once that is done, we'll be requiring a PID controller in S domain, so add this block right at the top, which is there. And uh, we also require an integrator. So search for integrator and uh, we will be getting it uh, right over here. That is one by S with respect to the Laplace transform S domain. Uh, and uh, once all of these are done, we will be requiring a sum block again, which will basically add uh, the signals that are there. So add this block as well. Uh, we will also require one of the most important blocks. Go to lookup tables and add sine wave function over here. So I'll tell you the reason uh, why it is specifically used uh, in comparison with the other ones. And uh, once this is done, we'll be requiring a gain block. So search for gain and you'll be getting it right at the top over here. Uh, apart from that, we need a couple of blocks again. We need a product block, which is uh, used to multiply the two signals. So search for product and choose the one that is there with an into mark. And uh, once this is added, we'll be requiring a DMUX with respect to the circuit that we have. So search for DMUX and choose the one that is there at the top. So we will be placing them in appropriate position so that we can get started with uh, the circuit with respect to the closed loop mode. So I'll be placing this over here and a PD controller just before one by S and uh, a sum block over here and uh, a block uh, with respect to addition and subtraction over here in this particular fashion. So we also need a constant block uh, to be positioned at this place. So now then what is the important thing in closed loop that we are going to do? I'll tell you that and probably you can correlate with the entire circuit diagram uh, with respect to the outcome that we are so. So uh, if you look at these blocks, it gives you the phase angle, the frequency uh, of the signal, isn't it? So it is minus 120 degree with respect to the first uh, phase, EA phase, if you consider that. So this is uh, minus 120 and this is minus 240. But what we'll be doing is we'll be deleting these values. So sine wave should generate uh, with the phase uh, differences on its own using a closed loop mode of operation based on the pattern in which the motor operates. So how do we do that? So we have to get three different sinusoidal signals with a phase shift of 0, 120 and 240 degree. That is our objective with respect to this circuit. So what we will be doing is I'll be co considering the reference speed that we want. So in case you want 1000 speed, 1000 RPM at the output. So set the value of 1000 to be uh, in this particular block. And this is the reference signal. We'll be comparing it to the standard output signal that we have already got over here. And this will give you an error, the difference between them. So in case you want 900 RPM, set that to 900 RPM. And then I'll be giving this signal to the PID controller. So PID controller is used in order to improve the steady state response or the transient behavior, peak overshoot, or depending upon certain requirements that you want. So I'll be setting the values of uh, the P and I. So basically there are many methods in which you can design this based on Laplace transform approach or trial and error methods as well, because this is an inbuilt block and it is not that easy to understand understand what is the operation. So this is the Laplace transform approach for the compensator formula that you can use while substituting and solving the equations. So for now, I'll be choosing a proportional controller and integral controller with a value of 0 0.01 and 1 respectively. Once that is done, click on OK 
and I'll be giving it to an integrator. So the purpose of using an integrator is to provide some delay. So because if you take uh, the Laplace transform convert into Z transform, you'll be getting Z power minus one. So it is basically used in sample and hold operation in terms of Z domain, but it is used to provide some amount of delay with respect to the circuit just to ensure that the closed loop operation behaves with respect to the changes in the motor load or the supply because uh, there'll be some amount of transients involved in motor when there is sudden change in the load, isn't it? So we are trying to give some amount of delay over here in this particular fashion i'll be connecting it here and we need a constant block again so constant uh, copy paste it over here and what i'm going to do here carefully observe we'll be using a square bracket 0 2 divided by 3 and i'll be giving it as 4 divided by 3 so why is this block necessary uh, if you carefully observe 2 divided by 3 and uh, multiplied by 180 you will be getting 120 and 4 divided by 3 multiplied by uh, 180 you will be getting 240 so this basically gives the phase angle with respect to the e each and every phases that is there 0 120 and 240 degree and that will be added with the signal that we are getting at the output consequently you will be having a lookup table with respect to sign so it will take this as the input that you are going to get with respect to the addition of these two signals and uh, the time that we have that is omega t will be multiplied with the signal that is sine that is sine of 2 pi f t isn't it we will be calling it as sine omega t isn't it so we basically have omega function here but we don't have the time value that is to be multiplied so consequently multiply it with this time value and give it to a dmux so if you double click on this change the number of output terminals to be equal to 3 and each of these values will be given to each of these blocks in this particular fashion i'll be connecting it at this point again at this point and this point again the operation remains the same with respect to uh, the comparison with a, a sequence uh, generator or a repeating sequence you call that uh, and you'll be getting the desired output so let the time uh, be equal to 10 seconds because uh, there is a lot of transients involved with respect to motor load let us click on run and wait for uh, the simulation to take place because it takes a lot of time so you can stop the simulation once it crosses two or three seconds uh, uh, with a value of t over here so let it run for some time and uh, let us cross verify the output waveform that we are supposed to get stopping the simulation here by clicking this button uh, double click on the scope and we can see the waveform so if you carefully observe it does take uh, some time to uh, settle these are the transients and it comes back and uh, stabilizes uh, at 1000 rpm and this is exactly what we are supposed to get with respect to the output waveform and uh, we are getting the desired value so this clearly indicates that closed loop operation is achieved so if there is any sudden changes in the load or sudden changes in the supply uh, you will still be getting 1000 rpm irrespective of the changes because it adjusts its value according to the closed loop operation i hope you were able to understand the simulation of closed loop uh, three phase spw mean motor connected to a motor load in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you